Blue Sky Alternative Investments is an alternate asset manager with more than $1.35 billion in assets under management. I'm Natalie MacDonald and joining me at the CEO sessions in Brisbane is the company's founder and managing director, Mark Sowerby. Mark, welcome back to FNN. Yeah, thanks Natalie. So can you start then by perhaps providing an introduction to Blue Sky Alternative Investments? Sure. So we started the business in 2006 as Blue Sky Private Equity, so we were investing into venture capital, private equity deals. And then we saw an opportunity to follow the US model, which was around moving into more alternative assets. So we saw that opportunity, we grabbed it, we listed ourselves in January 2012 with a market cap of $33 million. Uh, we've grown, I think, $180 million under management at the time and 25 staff. So now we've got about 80 in the team, as you said, more than $1.35 billion under management. Um, we're across four asset classes, so it's really, um, really grown uh, tremendously over that period of time, and we've obviously the market caps reflecting that we're about three hundred and fifty million dollar market cap now, and I suspect in the ASX three hundred sometime soon. Thanks so much, Mark. So, firstly, what are alternative investments, and, and what makes them attractive to investors? I think there's a couple of things. So, most alternatives aren't necessarily correlated with equity markets, and so, so when you invest in alternatives, by and large, with the exception of hedge funds, you're giving up liquidity. But what you're investing in are, are private markets, and I think in Australia in particular, the private markets are much more interesting. There's a lot of growth. Uh, that's where all the growth is coming from, all the innovation, all the new ideas, new companies. So, so you're investing into into illiquid markets. You're investing into private deals, and it can be private real estate. So it can be residential. Right now, we're doing a lot of student accommodation, as an example. Um, in real assets, we're investing into water rights, which I think is a really great way to play the agriculture theme. So you can follow themes. Um, what you give up is you give up liquidity, and so, but by giving up liquidity, you should get higher returns. And I think the really good managers in this space demonstrate they can make money over a long period of time. So how much interest is there for alternative investments in self-managed super funds and also more broadly? Well, more broadly, it's, it's actually the fastest growing asset class by some margin in Australia, So, which is the natural evolution that we've seen in the US and the UK and Europe, where they've got now 20, 25% of their money is in alternatives. Australia's down to about 17%. When we started our business, it was six. And I think a lot of the stuff that was in there were the leftover pieces. It certainly wasn't on anyone's radar, but now uh, we'll be at 20, 25% in the next you know, three or four years. Self-managed super funds are a big deal. That's really changed the way people invest, Natalie. So we're seeing people are looking at their super, they're in charge of their own, own super fund and they're making a decision to invest into these private markets and private opportunities because they can invest for the long term now. They've gone from being traders to investors. I think self-managed super is a, a really big deal and that'll be half the, half the superannuation money in our country in the next five or ten years. So it's a, it's a big play. So Mark, how have your funds performed and what is the situation with regards to liquidity? Yeah, so there's no liquidity in a lot of what we do. So our hedge funds are totally liquid and hence their popularity because people think they need liquidity. But what's, our returns have been 15.4% net of fees compounding since 2006. And the stock market's about the same level it was when we started our business. So the returns have been excellent. Where we've made our most money is in the least liquid investments, as you'd expect. So private equity, venture capital, we've done more than 20% compounding net of fees. Um, our real estate's done about 16% compounding net of fees. Our real assets about 14. There's some liquidity in the water rights. And the hedge funds have done about 10. So that liquidity curve, I think, is really interesting. And it tells you that we're making good decisions around where we invest for the risk that we're taking to get the right reward. So let's take a look then at some of the financials. What were your highlights then, as it were, for FY15? Yeah, I don't think there's been any surprises, really. You know, it's, it's quite a, um, it's a, such a long-term trend. The structural tailwinds we've got are, are huge. And I think the prize for us is that we can become Australia's leading alternative asset manager. And you, you think about that big pool of capital and where it's got to go. Um, and there aren't many managers to, to dial into. Uh, and we're seeing that flow through each and every year. So we're seeing more, you know, more assets under management. We certainly grew more than I expected with our with assets under management. Um, returns were great. We lifted net profit by 80%. Uh, revenues obviously were up as well at the same time as paying a dividend and building up the team. So I think we, you know, if we can continue to do that, obviously we're going to be a popular business, but there's a long way to go. This is a you know, 10, 20, 30 year play. Uh, if you look at Blackstone in the US, uh, they hit a billion dollars after 10 years, and we've done it after nine. This is 9.95 for them though. Um, they're at $400 billion on a management today and you know, one of the best companies in the world. And I'm not suggesting that we're Blackstone, but certainly the opportunity is there for us to be Australia's leading manager. So what are you expecting then from FY16? I think more of the same. I think you know we're, we're, we've reached the inflection point where we're actually scaling now. So I don't think we need to be heroes. We just need to continue to grow the areas that we're growing. The tailwinds are there. 
um, keep our nose clean, keep doing the right thing and keep doing it well uh, and we'll be fine and we'll see more and more growth in assets under management. It's probably a bit of an AUM play now. Uh, we are seeing that growth and you do need to grab that spot and we've used, for example, the listed investment company which we have our, our listed stock uh, for our funds uh, which is called the Blue Sky Alternative Access Fund and that's a way of people to get access to all the things that we do and we'll see that scaling as well. So I, I think it's mostly about building scale and keeping the team happy and doing a good job and the investment opportunities are enormous so, so I, I don't think we're short of, short of deal flow. So last question then Mark, where do you hope to see the company 12 months from now? Yeah, I mean, we, we provide a forecast every, or a bit of guidance, I guess, in February each year. But more, more than anything else, I think it's going to be just AUM growth. At some stage in the next year, we'll go through to $2 billion under management. Um, uh, it tends to, it's sticky money. So I think that'll flow through, through to our bottom line in, in future years as well. Um, so, I mean, it's, look, 12 months is not far enough out for me. I mean, I'm thinking about where are we going to be in, in 5 and 10 and 20 years. And so I, I think this is going to be a really big business. Uh, and next year will just be a small stepping stone for that. Mark, many thanks for the update. Thanks, Natalie.